an ounce podcast. JAT Flight 367 and the wrong Vesna. At 3.15 p.m. on January 26, 1972, Flight 367, a DC-9, took off from Copenhagen. About 45 minutes later, everything changed for the 28 passengers and crew. Vesna Velovec was in a place she wasn't intended to be. But her employer got her mixed up with a different Vesna on the roster. She could have declined the assignment from JAT Airways, the Yugoslavian state airline, where she worked as a flight attendant, but Vesna Velovic decided to take the mistaken assignment as she was excited to travel to Denmark, a place she had not been before. And with a long layover before the return flight, there would be time to see the sights, something a 23-year-old single girl could really enjoy. The First Chance It was 1971, and Vesna was excited about the idea of being a flight attendant or air hostess. From the moment she saw a friend in the stylish airline uniform, Vesna was in. She imagined traveling all over Europe and seeing the world, a glamorous existence for a girl from a small town in Yugoslavia. At the time, Eastern Europe was not the safest place to be. Croatian terrorists had been active and causing trouble for Yugoslavia since the early 60s. Commercial airliners had been one of the Croatians' targets for bombings and hijackings, especially the state airline, JAT. Like most of us, at 23, Vesna Velovic was immortal. She was a determined young lady wanting to live a great life, and being a flight attendant was going to help her get what she was after. However, there was at least one disqualifying factor for her to overcome in order for her to reach her goal. While in otherwise perfect health, she had a condition which caused low blood pressure, low enough that she would not pass the flight physical. But Vesna was nothing if not resourceful. She made it a point to enjoy multiple cups of strong coffee the morning of her medical screening. And it worked. She passed with flying colors and missed her first chance to be somewhere else instead of Flight 367 on January 26, 1972. The Second Chance According to Vesna, she was not scheduled to work Flight 367. There was some confusion in the company over which Vesna was to be assigned. It wasn't supposed to be her, but she jumped at the chance when the assignment came. The crew would get to stay at a swanky Sheraton hotel in Copenhagen. And once they arrived, the flight crew would have the entire afternoon of the 25th and the following morning to themselves. And then about 24 hours later, working the second leg of the trip, they would head back home. There was no way she was going to turn that down. She enthusiastically accepted the assignment and looked forward to some fun in Denmark and missed her second chance to be somewhere else instead of Flight 367 on January 26th, 1972. The Third Chance After an uneventful first leg of the flight, Vesna was looking forward to exploring Copenhagen, doing some sightseeing, but her colleagues insisted on her going along with them to go shopping. Looking back on the event, Vesna said, everybody wanted to buy something for his or her family, so I had to go shopping with them. They seemed to know that they would die and didn't talk about it. But I saw, I felt for them, and the captain, he was locked in his room for 24 hours. He didn't want to go out at all. In the morning during breakfast, the co-pilot was talking about his son and daughter as if nobody else had a son or daughter. Then, as they began to board the aircraft to return home, she recalled, We were in the terminal and saw the aircraft arrive. I saw all the passengers and crew to plane, and one man, seemingly terribly annoyed, it was not only me that noticed him either. Other crew members saw him, as did the station manager. 
I think it was the man who put the bomb in the baggage. I think he checked the bag in in Stockholm and got off in Copenhagen and never reboarded the flight. Everyone missed these subtle clues. And on January 26, 1972, Vesna Velovic boarded Flight 367 with her associates and prepared to fly home and missed her last chance to be somewhere else. She should have been elsewhere. Flight 367 was just over 33,000 feet up. That's 6.3 miles or 10.2 kilometers. They had been airborne for about 45 minutes. At 4.01 p.m., the DC-9 exploded. At approximately 4.04 p.m., wreckage and bodies fell to the earth near Serbia Kamenis. Though there are a few other theories on what brought the aircraft down, investigators suspect that a bomb had been placed in a suitcase by a Croatian terrorist and left in the cargo compartment. It is easy to assume that the annoyed man who stayed off the plane and left his bag to go on without him may be responsible in some way. That bomb detonated, tearing the aircraft to pieces. There was no chance to react. Mercifully, 27 of the 28 on board were not at all likely to have experienced any fright or pain. Not long after the wreckage slammed into the snow-covered slope of a mountain, a local man, Bruno Hunky, arrived. There were just pieces and chunks of the plane and bodies. And one young woman, screaming half in and half out of a section of the fuselage. She was covered in blood and pinned in place by a food cart and the dead body of another crew member. Bruno had been a medic during World War II and was able to keep Vesna alive until more help arrived. Vesna had just survived a fall without a parachute further than any other human. She also suffered multiple skull fractures, fractured vertebrae, fractured pelvis and legs, and contusions to the brain and other organs of her body. Though reported by some sources to be conscious and able to communicate when she was found, she later fell into a coma. There were three likely events that didn't happen. First, she should have died when the bomb detonated, but she didn't. Second, she should have been killed by the normally fatal high-velocity impact when she reached the ground. Experts say that they would have expected Vesna's heart to basically burst when her body smashed into the ground, but her low blood pressure, the issue she had hidden from the airline in order to become a flight attendant, might have been the thing that prevented an instant death. The third, having ended up on a rather remote mountainside, she should have bled out or died from exposure. Instead, she was found by someone, but not just any someone. Bruno Henke, a man with training and experience in dealing with such traumatic injury, was able to take the action needed to keep her alive. Vesna spent several months in a hospital and several more recuperating, but in spite of her injuries and being in a coma for several days, she recovered and went back to work with the airline. Mercifully, she has no memory of the accident. What's luck got to do with it? So here's the ounce. What a lucky lady, don't you think? The only person to survive a devastating air crash that took the life of every person there, except her. Vesna Volovic sees things differently. In an interview 30 years after the accident, she expressed herself as a very pragmatic person who didn't think much of the concept of luck. Luck, she insisted, would have her not be there and would not have taken the lives of all those people. And the crash that nearly killed her, that was just part of her life, and life happens. She clearly expressed her philosophy of life when she said, I believe we are masters of our lives. We hold all the cards, and it is up to us to use them right. She may have something there. What do you think? And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. 
Appreciate you watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please take some action. Hit the like buttons, subscribe to the channel, share with friends. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks.